Hi, I'm Allison from Fronatiska Heritage Center, and today I'm going to be talking about telescopes. Now, you may be fortunate enough to have one of these. They're really cool if you can. Um, but these guys right here, these are just the small ones. If you've ever looked at some of the pictures from NASA, from Hubble, from, oh, oh goodness, there, there's so many other places out there where you can see these pictures, but Hubble, especially in lots of the other big observatories like Mauna Kea, all those places, they're using telescopes that are probably almost as, the, the Mauna Kea Observatory is probably as big as this building. So they're massive, massive telescopes. And Hubble is probably about as big or bigger than my car. It's, it's a big old telescope. But there are other types of telescopes from these that measure other things. There are telescopes that measure x-rays. Astronomers are actually taking x-rays of outer space. Believe it or not, you can learn some weird things by doing that. They're using gamma ray telescopes. That is a whole other type of energy on the um, energy spectrum there. Something we cannot see, but they learn a lot from those too. There are radio telescopes where they're actually listening to what's coming from stars, coming from other objects in outer space, and by listening to those patterns, the energy that's coming from them, that tells them a little bit about what's going on with those objects, how they're moving, if there's anything going around them, what, what, what. <laughs> so they're learning all sorts of weird things from these different types of energy that we can't even see. But these guys use things that we can see. These are optical telescopes and they use visible light, but you've probably noticed they are not the same. This one is very long and skinny. This one is a lot thicker, it's very squat, and that is for a very important reason. They work in two different ways. This one uses lenses. It is a refracting telescope, it uses lenses. You wear glasses or contacts, you use lenses. It works in a similar sort of principle where you you're looking through the lens the light is coming in from the opening here it's going through all those lenses in the telescope and it's getting bent and magnified so you're able to see whatever it is you're looking at much closer much more clearer than you ever could with just your eyes so this is a refracting telescope it's always going to be longer than this kind of telescope over here because of how the lenses need to be spaced out in the cylinder of the telescope. Now this one over here is a reflecting telescope. Well, if you know, if you think about the word reflect for a minute, what, what do you think that means it has inside of it? What reflects? Mirrors. This one uses mirrors inside of it. So instead of just looking straight through it, like you do this one, the light comes into the opening and it bounces back and forth a little bit until it gets redirected back out through the eyepiece. So instead of looking straight through it, you're looking at several different reflections of the image. Why would you do that? Why would you reflect the light instead of using lenses? This, using a reflecting telescope, when you bend the light, through lenses, it has a tendency to um, make things kind of fuzzy. Um, you can have something called aberration, where the colors get separated a little bit. It's just, it's, it's a lot harder to focus with these. And also because they have to be long for them to focus properly, they can get really big and clunky in a hurry. So you get a lot more compact with the reflectors because you can have a much bigger opening, let in a whole lot more light, and you don't have quite as big of a, I mean, it's still heavy, it's still very heavy, but it's a lot more compact, it's a lot more portable, it's a lot easier to use. You get a much clearer picture because that light is not being distorted by going through a lens. It's just being bounced back and forth a few times and nothing really changes. It's just backwards a little bit. Um, so this is a reflecting telescope. This is a refracting telescope. This one does have a better picture you probably see a lot of these on the market. I wouldn't get one of these expecting to see, um, definitely not Pluto, because we can't even see Pluto 
from here on earth. Um, but you're, you're not going to be able to see much more with this than just the craters on the moon. Not in any great detail. Sorry to be disappointing, but um, you can see the rings of Saturn, but eh, it's eh, not going to be as great. So I wouldn't get one of these expecting to see the great mysteries of outer space. If you want to get a really good telescope, you probably want to go with a reflector, but this is a good starting point. Now, telescope care. If you're taking your telescope beyond your backyard or even just toting it out into your backyard, you need to be careful about vibrations. Keep it steady, don't jerk it around. Make sure if you have to take it apart a little bit to transport it safely, do that because the more you shake it up, the more stuff's gonna get jiggled out of alignment and that's gonna mess it up big time. So make sure you protect your telescope from vibration. Also protect it from big swings in temperature and humidity. So if it's really hot or really cold all of a sudden, don't take it out. It needs time to get used to it a little bit. Otherwise, the materials that it's made up might crack if it's suddenly shoved into a much colder temperature or much hotter temperature. You don't want to put it in direct sunlight unless it's designed for that. So keep it safe. Protect it from extremes, protect it from vibrations, also protect it from moisture. Water and telescopes do not mix. Please, 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 please keep, <laughs> keep them safe. Why would you be stargazing in the rain anyway? That, that would be hard to do. So these are reflectors, refractors, optical telescopes. Thank you so much for your time.